Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is packed with Easter eggs, references, and more than a few deep cut comic cameos. Here's every secret we found. Let's start with those cameos. Stan Lee went meta and made an appearance where he actually explains all his other cameos, specifically his turn as a FedEx delivery man in Captain America Civil War. This suggests that all his MCU characters were actually the same guy the whole time. Stan was talking to the Watchers, a race of all-seeing aliens who make it their duty to observe the lives of others, but not interfere. The one who got a close-up has got to be Uatu, the Watcher who became so enamored with Earth that he broke his code and decided to help save humanity on more than one occasion. Howard the Duck apparently left the Collector's lair where we saw him in the Stinger for Guardians 1. He makes another cameo in Volume 2, drinking at the bar with the Ravagers and is once again voiced by Seth Green. As the credits roll, we see Cosmo the Space Dog, who also cameoed in the first movie. We also get our first on-screen look at Jeff Goldblum's Grand Master, who is one of the villains in Thor Ragnarok. Knight Rider star David Hasselhoff is referenced numerous times throughout the film by Peter, and sure enough, he cameos at the end when Ego transforms himself into the Hoff. A certain cosmic being gets a subtle reference when Peter first accesses his powers and says he can see, quote, Eternity. Eternity just happens to be the name of the being that literally makes up all of existence and has appeared in several large-scale Marvel comic space stories. Foreshadowing? Sylvester Stallone's appearance is way more than just a cameo. He plays Stakar. In the comics, Stakar is the anti-hero Starhawk, a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy from an alternate future in the 31st century. Other members from that lineup also appear in Guardians 2, though as Ravagers. Ving Rhames plays Charlie 27, Michelle Yeoh plays Alita, and Miley Cyrus voices Mainframe. Krugar is the name of that red creature, and it's rumored that Smallville's Michael Rosenbaum plays the crystal man known as Martin X. In the comics, Yondu is also a member of that original team of Guardians, so the movie acknowledges that by showing that they all have a shared history together. Speaking of Yondu, he gets his signature look from the comics when he puts on his prototype fin to break out of captivity and take revenge on the mutinous Ravagers. Ego's full name in the comics is Ego the Living Planet, and he literally is a planet with a giant face on it. When Yondu and Rocket fly to Ego to join the fight at the end of Guardians Volume 2, the shot of the planet's atmosphere is intentionally reminiscent of Ego's comic depiction. It turns out that the movie Ego is more than a living planet. He's a celestial. We've actually seen a fairly comics-accurate depiction of a celestial in the MCU before, when the Collector explained the Infinity Stones in the first Guardians movie. Celestials wield power beyond even Earth's mightiest heroes, and it has long been their prerogative to play judge, jury, and executioner on a cosmic scale, so having Ego be a celestial is very fitting to their M.O. As another throwback to the 80s, the computer stations the Sovereign used to control their fighters make classic arcade noises. Early in the film, we visit the world of Contraxia, where Yondu and his Ravagers are engaging in, shall we say, some rest and relaxation. But this planet also exists in the comics. In fact, the hero in One Time Avenger, Jack of Hearts, was half Contraxian. Finally, one of the end credit scenes features a defeated Aisha looking upon a pod and saying Adam will help her get her revenge. This Adam is none other than Adam Warlock, one of Marvel's most popular and storied cosmic characters. Adam is a comics character with key ties to the Guardians and the Avengers. In the Infinity Gauntlet comic and its many sequels, he actually had an Infinity Stone on his forehead and was integral to the fight against Thanos. But don't get your hopes up for him to play a role in the movie versions of the Thanos showdown. Director James Gunn tells IGN that Adam won't appear in Avengers Infinity War. For more on Adam Warlock, check out our video explaining the end of the movie and other post credit scenes. And don't forget to check out our Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 review. Let us know any Easter eggs we missed in the comments, and make sure to keep it locked on IGN.